Two Lukes, one Jury, one Rashid. And I'm loving this rank overall. Now we get to see our champion that had qualified from the offline French premiere going up against the world warrior, Uma, representing Asia East for the region that he participated in. Again, Hong Kong versus Taiwan in our grand, or sorry, in our winner's finals. This is going to be emphatic. Luke versus Jury. Your thoughts on the matchup thus far, Jamis, as it's been unfolding, we talked about how often these two characters have been facing off against each other on the stage. I think these two characters are some of the best at harassing you with medium attacks, especially being fearful of them. Jury on block and hit. Luke, the same thing, but Luke has to force a strike throw situation. Jury has a plus two on block. Luke doesn't, I believe. The interesting thing will be is if Uma wants to use the fireball, how will Chris Wong try to respond? Because he doesn't really have an anti a projectile tool outside of level one. It could be parries instead. We've got to test Uma's reactions as well to towards Drive Rush. We saw Chris Wong trying to do that there with the suppressor, but already getting hit by a fireball. Stores up again. Already checking the loads, you're starting to see some of the patterns. Or at least Uma was up until this point. Chris Wong dishing out the damage, opting to go for the advantage, and a little bit of a stutter with the lay on the crouching jab with everything. But now Chris Wong has a lot of room to work with to build up some of that drive gauge. And you know Uma's gonna be stepping on the gas every single time to close that gap significantly. Well, he's gotta be careful when he throws the fireball and tries to drive rush after it, because if Chris Wong tries to get perfect parry or walk forward, yeah, he can actually try and check the drive rush, the subsequent drive rush, I should say. He gets an abundance of damage there into the back dash, but no punish. There from Uma. Oh, okay, that works. That was a juggle. Okay, impromptu the juggle there. Wow. I've never seen that before, but it worked. Improvised, worked out. And he misses his, yeah, he missed something. That was an execution error from Chris Wong, and he's not happy. And you can tell on his facial expression when he makes an execution error. That's the second time he's done that on the big stage, by the way. Even within the top eight. Good. Okay, trading with the fireball and then the chase down there into the conversion for the level one, which puts Chris Wong in a dangerous spot. Unless he has other plans. Who's more dangerous? The person applying the media or the person who's loaded with an OB? Maybe Phenom was right all those years ago. He was. I still think he was. He is. Good block and he anticipated it. He probably tried to bait something else there, but Uma thought he was looking to do something else. That's why he went to the anti throw tool. Oh, down. man, that was such a sharp angle. Couldn't get the uppercut. Way. He's not going to drive reversal. He can't. And he did a delay jab. He, he was anticipating that. Understanding the situation. Awareness. And he you thought him. you could let the fireball ring with a level three. If there's anything that's anti-fireball, it is definitely that. Well, he's still alive here. What's the risk going to be from Uma? He's still in Feng Shui, by the way. So he can take advantage of this. But it's about to completely dissipate. Backs away. And he's low on drive gauge. No resources left in the tank, so he goes for a dive kick instead. And he's trying to avoid the chip. He was trying to avoid a oh chip God. scenario. And Chris Walt, I'm telling you, his situation awareness and understanding when people want to do something and bait something from him, he's not biting, man. I'm telling you, so difficult to fish out of the sea. Had Uma gone for just anything on the ground, he would have gotten OD up for his trouble, and he possibly would have died from chip. Well, takes the grab one time, walks into the fireball there, playing it safe, gets a punish. He's been actually handling those Fuha stores really well. The Tenson Renant here. Great control thus far in the corner from Uma. Okay, he gets the drive reversal. reversal. An offensive one at that as well. Keep him marshaled in the corner. You've got to be careful with whiffing some of those buttons, man. Chris Wong is pouncing and ready. He'll yeah. burn himself out if he has to. And I like the presence of the mind for Chris Wong just to throw out some of the sandblasters while Uma created space after that roundhouse. But now, again, the, the big wrist paying off. These have been uh, out of character uppercuts. They've actually been successful thus far. I'm not going to lie. I'm not used to seeing Chris Wong play. This risky, but he doesn't want to be trapped in the corner for too long while his dry gauge is still regenerating. Checks him out. There you go. Safe cancel. Perfect. Gets his third. Oh, and he got How it. How often have we seen that? We've seen Nephew do that a couple of times. And now, oh, that could have been the round. That was commit. it. Uma did not commit to the rest of that string. That was a counter hit as well. He's got a guess for game, and he blocks. He's still got level one. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's going to try and do that level one against a sandblaster again. Chris Wong. He's highly attentive towards that, and this is what I was talking about! Oh, but he didn't get the last bit of it! Uma, saved by the grace of Jury's fireball! It crept up on Chris Wong, despite Jury getting blasted! That's still going to be the round for Uma as it crept up! If wow. you cannot tell me wow. that that was not fortuitous, that that was not a happy accident, the best happy accident we'll probably get at the tournament. I don't know what to tell you, mate. How about that? Falcon Blast not doing its duties because one of the best fireballs, one of the slowest fireballs, saving the day for Uma. Chris Wong now.
He could be belligerent here. He could still be calm, stick to plan A, because he didn't play bad in that set. Not at all. It's just that fate was not in our hands. The game just had other ideas. Sometimes the game wins for you. It's not in your control. Sometimes you can play well and you can still lose. Stores up. Again, that fireball. Hasn't been the bane of his existence, but it's played an integral part thus far. Speaking of which, back to back punish counters from Uma, making the right choices. The eye will splat. Big damage here for Chris Wong. Is he going to uppercut again or leave it? No, he tried to escape this time round and it's still not working out. He's going to change up the option. Takes the ground. Also checking with the heavy punch in case Chris Wong tried to leave again with Dude. movement with the perfect parry. The confidence to even do that, what he was doing against DCQ before, and he tried. That's not what he wanted at all, but it's totally fine. It put him in a very awkward situation. Now Uma, Chris Wong does get the big punish counter. Tencent Rin close to burnout. He's, He's trying to chase him down. down as well. Yeah, he tried to cover his approach so he can actually try and burn him out with a button instead. Didn't quite work out. And now Chris Wong's being slippery. That was such a bad fireball. That was an unfortunate fireball. He thought Uma was going to stay feet firmly pried on the ground there, but it didn't work out. Not because of the intensity of the situation. Looking for it. Gets that. He's so lucky that connected on the latter act two frames, and it did. No uh, charge on the light flash knuckle. A little bit too close to the corner. I totally respect Chris Wong trying to go for it anyway with the light flash knuckle. Could have maybe changed it up with an uppercut for the damage, but either way, damage is damage. And speaking of, now Uma, he tried to advance a little bit. He's got to wake up with an option here and then gets the grab. Uma hasn't done a DP yet, and he's going to actually go under the Sandblaster again with the Super Art one and chase him down because he has to stay hot on wow. that drive gauge. And a perfect parry. Optimization's coming through. One more sequence even after this throw. Chris Wong, he's going to be in hot pursuit after the... What in the world? He still managed to sneak in that crouch jab is Uma. Uma doing the business here. Low and drive gauges Chris Wong, unless he gets a conversion with the saving grace. If he has to burn himself out with a hooker by Crook to get the round, he will do so. And he still preserves his level three. He's even down there. Good perfect parry into the surprise throw. Still looking for a hit confirm is Chris Wong on one of those mediums. Oof. Confirm off of that. Crouch medium punch doing all the work right now. Off for the damage, dashes up, creates that space. Now we're back mid-screen. A sandblast to the ring out, Uma. He's challenged with the fireballs, but Chris Wong, now he is encroaching on that space where it's awkward for the mediums to connect. I like that he's moved closer as well because you can't do the level one of that range. You can't humanly react to that unless you're superhuman. Shouts to Nephew for even showing me that. I mean, place. if he does it, I feel like I wouldn't be too surprised because he's on the grand stage right now. Max away, I thought he's going to go for a grab there, but Chris Wong gets a delayed jab and he's respecting that fireball and creates some space for Uma to work with until wow. he checks a drive rush and I think he's going to have to convert to level three. Let's find out. You already know it. So this isn't going to kill necessarily, but it leads for a very, very tough situation for Uma to even combat out against. Uma's got to play it safe here because even if he makes a defensive choice, it might not work out. Oh, and it no, is no, a parry. No, 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 not here. He's still got parry on deck. And this is going to be, this could be disastrous. Feng Activating Shui. into the Feng Shui engine. Interesting, he, he wants to beat. Oh. He's so, he's so ridiculous when it comes to his game sense. He's fully aware of what Uma wants to entice him with. And he's like, you know what? No buy. I don't blame him for that Feng Shui because Chris Wong was in the Ambiturza drive gauge and we talked about how brilliant Jury is at harassing you and inflicting that drive gauge damage, really flusty to making a choice. He tried to opt for a jump, sneak in some damage beforehand, but Chris Wong comfortably, calmly walked under him. And got the round there. And off to a fine start here is Uma in this third game. Okay, gets the three-piece into the uppercut. Drive reversal, keep it offensive. What a, what a call out. Oh, but he missed the flash knuckle. Interesting, he, he still chose to drive up afterwards, even after the block. All right, gets the fireball pressure here, and Chris Wong tried to steal a turn there, but didn't quite work out still. Gets a two-piece, and then the DI, and he's going to keep it meterless here because he wants to regenerate as much drive gauge as possible, and My it finally... God, Uma calling it right. He's been going for the anti-throw tech plenty of times over throughout the set. The one time Chris Wong had that intuition to maybe neutral jump, he gets blown up for it. But I think he was actually still looking for a throw stubbornly. Yeah. And it just worked out yeah. for him, and he gets a drive impact against Chris Wong's sequence, and here comes the Feng Shui engine. He can look to burn him out here, and there it is. Chris Wong still has a level one if he doesn't get this wrong. Good block on the overhead. Tried to steal his turn back, though. That was a counter hit. Still threatens the stun because he's in level two and it's about oh, to completely evaporate yeah. that bar. That's the third time over Uma's lock control in the corner. Oh. He recovers so well. What was that noise? Yo, that was sick. <gasps> Got a bit of throw, not doing it. Be careful. 
how many times? When have we ever seen that from Chris Wong? The whiffed fierce Uma, keeping it calm, getting the light. Remember, the he's light. feeling the pressure here. They're playing for a better position to earn themselves a boatload of cash. So even then, multiple boats. Multiple boats. Multiple warehouses, maybe. I don't know. For anything. There's a plethora of options. Maybe a treasure trove. Who knows? Maybe not in California. <laughs> I know the rent's high here, but no. <laughs> we're gonna talk about that median later. Anyways, right, backs away, and then a perfect parry there, and gets the delayed crouching medium punch, and he will flash knuckle his way to the corner. Oof. I, I respect that he didn't try and check that there, but he gets the snap back target combo into delayed jab, OD flash knuckle. Line up a cut, still gets the advantage. Ten cent win, OD from Uma. Is that the first one? I, mean, mm, I don't think it's the first one. My recollection, it could have been, but. These matches happen so fast, and he gets the drive rush cancel off the first hit, the stand medium kick. Because if that was the second hit, I don't think he would have been able to special cancel. So he got that. Fireball away. Keeps him in block stun for a little amount of time with that early sand blaster. So intimidating from the space. That's right beautiful. right under the timer, right? That's exactly where you want to be to keep that control uh -oh. against the opponent. Oh no. He blocked Ooh. it out. He's still got they've both still got supers. Please do not be please don't leave with all your fireballs. Please. Oh my word. Please, I'm scared. I'm scared for you. You're one wrong, me one out, man. wrong fireball and you guys are done. <gasps> He's gonna chip him out. <sighs> to be fair, dude, how many times did Chris Wong throw out that fireball? He was showing he was he's gonna have the courage to, to intimidate Uma with that. He had level two loaded. He, he had did. two level ones loaded, I should say. Intimidation was the correct word for that scenario here, and he beats him to the punch with the crouching medium punch over Jury standing hard punch. Just within the range to get the perfect uh, sequence. Ooh, he got a oh, crouching medium kick. He got the right read on wake up, but didn't commit to the cancel. So Chris Wong is going to punish him for his troubles. Empty jump. And you saw the awareness too, the parry, just in case of the safe jump scenario over the <laughs> jump fears. I love he backed away out of respect for that fireball. Still could do something here. One check, one crouch, medium punch. We'll close out this round. Ah, there it you is! You are truly Nostradamus, I got to say. That was actually beautifully placed for Chris Wong. The timing immaculate yet again in terms of the placement of the crouch medium. It's it's the patience Chris Wong exudes in general, but because the fireball's there, it's like he's comfortable with the timing, waiting for it to evaporate right in his face, and he knows that Uma is in a position where he wants to throw out buttons. So you try and challenge that, and as Rins would like to say, the money button is doing its work. It's getting paid overtime with this money in front of us here, but I'm telling you. So what happens now? We're stuck at two and two between Chris Wong and Uma. Do you think there's going to be a little bit of a change of aggression at the start it, of the round? It could be, but it's harder to read Chris Wong's wake oh, up. Ah, you know. Wait! What did happen? Oh, wow. Okay, here, here comes the perfect parry party game. Here we go. Oh, I, I got him quite the delayed buttons there instead of delayed throw tech. Either way, it works out. I love that he throws out the Beautiful. only blaster to stop the fireball. Barry's in there. That good pressure here. Chris Wong, make your choice. And he's still blocking it out here before he has to take a risk. Perfect parry. Side switch? No. No, he's going to go for the damage. He usually does when you watch his YouTube clips. Well, now we're in Capcom Cup. There's a lot of money on the line. Wow. Oh, is that? That's negative three on block, so he's fine at that range there. Luckily, he didn't go for an immediate tap parry after that block roundhouse. And, and he that was the him. beginning of it, too, so it is cancelable. He should have burnt, burnt himself out and gone for the level one. I hope he doesn't rue that decision. Oh, boy. Oh, and Chris isn't oh flinching. Boy. Still low on drive gauge. Here's Chris. He's chilling. He's looking for a moment to cancel. He's Uma super building his gauge right back up. The dash! She, she moves. So, so quickly that if you blink, it's pretty much over and dead with but one of the fastest dash speeds in the game, taking full advantage of that. I don't think we've seen that option up until this point. Boy, it's good. Ultra David talks about all the time. Glad that the high-level players oh. do not get caught by suppressing that fashion anyway. Well, it changed my thought process. They cut the late jab. Nice recovery. Ooh. And then no Feng Shui, but he's going to use the OD projectile as a barrier to close the gap. But Chris Wong needs some space, and he jumps away with the jump medium punch this time. How's he going to activate Feng Shui engine? He's got to be after the next block string, perhaps. That's what he might be looking for, but he wants to burn out first. There, he wants to burn out. Now he might try and go for it, unless Chris Wong wants to burn him out. This is a tough spot. I, even for Uma, I think it's going to be just fine if he gets that Feng Shui first. Ooh. Just out of range! Ooh. The perfect punish, counter cross media punch, bring it out. It's time to take him down to Memphis. That was precise spacing on point, and his reward is his drive gauge was completely refreshed to allow him 
to get the conversion necessary to put him in the driving seat to put him in grand finals when it's no side way. and he starts off firing on no all way. cylinders. Oh, he dropped it. Final Uma. game, final round for both. The pressure is no, on. That was too expensive. That was such an extortionate amount of meter. And he's going to activate the Feng Shui to make amends. And he's going to block it out here. Yep, he's going to block everything until the necessary moment. I saw that perfect parry. That was sneaky. Ah, nuts. Man, it's so scary to even try to attempt a drive reversal against the Feng Shui. Punish counter. Feng Shui no longer a factor. The backdash read. He dropped the flash knuckle again. That was huge because Uma has actually got him in a conducive spot here. He can just take some big risk. Tried to take the big risk with the jump. Didn't quite work out there. And that could have been... Oh, that didn't look punishable. But the back throw here. Chris just needs one buffer into level one. And you, you saw him buffering away already. Let's throw. He needs, to close, he needs to keep him close. He can't throw him again unless it's in the corner. Oh, it's that medium punch. No super. No anti-air either. The intimidation factor is there, Uma. He's still trying to close the gap against Chris Wong. Still in burnout. Not until right. this moment. The dry gauge is back, so he's going to look for another cancel instead. He blocks it out here. Staggered the lights. The defense from Uma. The perfect parry. Feng Shui. We got to go into the Feng Shui. Right. Coast he, to coast. He has to play it safe and go for the safe jump. Do not try any gimmick. Just do the safe jump, please. Thank you. Well, here he goes, still applying the pressure, blocks the fuzzy, he didn't commit to the dive kick, he's still alive, can he tip him out? And there you have it, Uma with the tip sequence, Feng Shui engine, peppering his opponent and allows him to create the necessary scenario, puts him in the grand final of winner's side. That's what you need by determination, that's what you need by resilience, and boy does Uma show it there. That is a deadly piece that. of play. I'm loving that. Him making that executive decision to keep it nice and clean when it came to the Feng Shui engine. That is pure knowledge of self-determination. Uma is now in the grand finals where he has at least secured himself $300,000 by default. I don't even think Uma expected himself to get this far. One of the best juries around the world just to regurgitate. This guy is phenomenal with the performance, with the peacefulness, I should say. And again, it could be a huge shock to him. It might happen after we're done with the bracket here. But Chris Wong, man, did he make him work for that effort. Vicious. He really did. He really did. Taking a look at the reason why Uma had decided to do what he did. I'm sure it's going to be highlighted soon. But yeah, the Feng Shui engine didn't really pay off many times over, to be fair. Chris Wong had abused that level three, taking away the fireball options from Uma. But more importantly, the spacing that he's taking at, that was actually mad sick. That was the first time I've ever seen Chris Wong really shaken up. You could see it from the player cam. That was actually crazy that the fireball lasted that long. But again, Chris Wong recovered nice, nicely, excuse me, off of the crouching medium punch spacing, and overall his presence on offense. Dude, he exhibited all the matchup knowledge when necessary that's necessary to see in this matchup here, Luke versus Jury. But again, even his corner defensive decision making was actually fairly on point. It's just that Uma was still determined and he was still confident that he can close it out. It took it down to the wire here. And we know that Luke lands tremendous damage, but he still wasn't deterred. He was still faithful. I don't think we saw a, a super art three at all. I think it was just level one. From Uma? And, uh, yeah, from Uma. I think it was yeah. just level one and Feng Shui engine. That's correct. I don't think there's anything else here. And man, did things get nitty and gritty oh in this part. What a beautiful punish counter as well. Yeah, look, just off of the standing medium kick, and that was the cancelable part of it too. But that was tense. Even, even after the intimidation factor, we talked about it, like how is the aggression going to be like for either character, for either player, really? Chris Wong was the one that really put the pedal towards the drive gauge and just kind of move in on Uma's face. But I love the fact that Uma didn't back down when he saw the green. Dude, in fact, that, that was parry? the perfect time for him to get his defense shining Dude. with the perfect parry. But this is the sequence that we were looking for, right? What would have been the option it would have been a safe jump, and I'm glad that he did it. That could have been scary, because if Chris Wong had walked under, we would have seen possibly a punish counter on the landing frames. And you know what's crazy? He was going to stay airborne the whole time anyway, just to avoid any wake-up supers, and even Chris Wong. Now, he, despite being super patient in those scenarios, you still have to have the confidence to walk under and burn out and still deal with the pressure afterwards. So I actually really respect that persistence 